this really well because she's actually a, a whale. She's into sort of um, conservation of whales and dolphins, and that's what her brand is all about. And she gives money to whale and dolphin conservation. So she, you know, people could see that her story was actually, it was authentic. This wasn't something that she would ever do to, to upset people. But, um, you know. Um, just, yeah. um, maybe changing the subject a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, do you have any cautionary tales or moral lessons from um, seeding guerrilla campaigns or proactively seeding guerrilla campaigns? Mm. Um, I guess if you're doing a guerrilla campaign, um, you almost have to work backwards. Like, what is the worst thing that could possibly happen? Like, if someone was really super sensitive, could they take this? in a yeah. most offensive way. Like you almost have to play devil's advocate and try and look at how bad could this get? Could this go really bad? What could happen? And then work back from there. Yeah. So I guess that's the thing is that you, you know, and lots of brands do it and we sit around the office all day and throw around ideas that are really brave and that really, you know, sometimes they're a bit viral, sometimes they're a bit sort of guerrilla marketing or whatever. But the, the idea is, you know, what do we want to achieve? Are we going to sort of offend people on the way down? And if it's really fun and there's some great things that go on, but if it's, you know, and sometimes if it's a little bit controversial but not completely offensive, it's, you know, it's a risk you can take. Um, but yeah, you just, like, it's. Well, what about borderline really like things like when you pretend to be your customer mm -hmm. and start seeing messages? Um, people are really. Um, People are very savvy, like really savvy. You have to be, like you have to let your customers and the public really either take what you're doing and share it with people and do all that, or it just doesn't, just doesn't happen. Like it's, people can smell you a lot off if it's a PR thing or a, and you know what's interesting site to look at is um, a site called mumbrella.com.au. Yeah. I don't know if you guys, yeah, I mean, that is really sort of like a, something that I monitor and I also might watch Media Watch for when my friends end up on it or <laughs> hopefully I don't and I haven't today, which is fabulous. But I always sort of use that as a bit of a base. Like if I'm going to go into a brainstorm or think of something ridiculous to do with a dollar, which I mean, it's PR and marketing, so you often don't have a big budget, is I'll look on other sort of sites that are in media and marketing and look at guerrilla campaigns and other things and what's being received really, really badly. I actually did that this afternoon when we were looking at a, a campaign for a major national takeaway, you know, hospitality type business. And we were going, right, what can we do with this new product that they're launching? Let's do this treasure hunt thing. Let's have people run all over the city. And, and I just said, like I sort of said at that point, actually, on Media Watch literally a week ago, there was something that Kyle and Jackie O did where it was win a car. Like they did something with Holden Astra. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Yeah, got in a few nods. And basically, what it was is that you had to go and find, um, you know, the person that had the the app or the car on their mobile, like their iPhone or their Android phone. And if you went within a certain range of them you would get the car on your phone. So you have to sort of basically get the car on your phone and then run away before someone came close enough to get it from you. And they had people like doing 100K an hour down suburban streets trying to get this app. Like, you know, you just sort of sit there and go, is there a chance that people could try and die doing <laughs> this? Like, you know, you have to sort of go at that point of, which obviously, I mean, maybe they did and maybe they didn't, but, when it gets to that point and ends up on Media Watch for 20 minutes and, you know, the radio um, licensing people are putting in new legislation specifically for Today FM and all the dumb stuff that they do, which is hysterical and I enjoy it and take part in it, but, you know, people just take it to the extreme. And I guess that's the other thing. Will it really offend anyone? If someone takes it to the extreme, are we going to be up for a lawsuit? <laughs> they get really good insurance. So yeah. just with um, media becoming more interactive, yeah. Um, yeah, you may get written up about it, maybe a great article, yeah. Yeah. and then you get the public forum commenting, yeah. and then you get two customers potentially you know, getting into an argument about 
the different perspectives in yep. your brain. Yep. Um, do you let that just fizzle out and work itself out? And at which point do you get involved? And yep. At which point do you correct you know, incorrect statements and yep. things like that? Um, so this is something, um, when I had this um, swimwear crisis, <laughs> God, it seems ridiculous now that it was over a piece of swimwear, but we did the same thing um, on Facebook, is people abused us, abused us, you know, told us everything, um, you know, and I'd, all, I'd heard it all 50 million times. And then it got to a point where people started jumping on and defending the brand. And so we had people sort of on either side of the fence and they were sort of back and forward. And I think with something like that, it's better to just let it go. If it's abusive, threatening, violent, anything that's really inappropriate and you go, whoa, that's a little bit too far, then that's when I start to take things down. But if it was a general rational discussion between two people, I think that's that's a good thing. And it's people come to your different sort of touch points with the brand because they want to have an opinion either way. And I think that, you know, if they'd like to do that and have a rational discussion, then, then they're conversing about your brand. So within reason, I think that's a pretty good thing. And I think it's best not to stop it. So if you start going around removing everything that's not overly positive or whatever, it's just people will notice it and they'll start to um, sort of come back at you. Um, if it's a statement that they've sort of, they're arguing and it's not,